Rhinovirus by Andrew Rento. Rhinovirus is a virus that causes the common cold, which almost everyone in the world will get at some point in time. There are 62 million cases annually in the U.S. and costs billions of dollars annually in medical visits and missed days of work. So what is this rhinovirus? Well, it is a positive, single-stranded RNA surrounded by a capsid. The viral genome consists of a single gene whose translated protein is cleaved to produce 11 proteins. Four of the proteins form the capsid, and the rest are involved in replication and assembly. The way it enters the body is through the nasal passage when in contact with one's own skin, particularly the hands. Through breathing, the virus is transported into the upper respiratory tract. It remains there throughout the entire span of infection because it cannot survive anywhere else. It requires a low temperature of 89 degrees, but the body is roughly 98 degrees. It is the constant airflow through the upper respiratory tract that lowers temperatures and maintains optimal conditions. Within 15 minutes of entering the body, rhinovirus will enter its first cell in the nasal passage through macropenocytosis and independent endocytosis. Once inside, the host cell's ribosomes translate the viral RNA. The proteins are made and reassemble the virus, which exits the cell through lysis. The virus and this process will spread through the nasal passage and into the throat. The human will feel the symptoms of rhinovirus, which include stuffy nose, sore throat, congestion, sneezing, coughing, muscle aches, chills, and fatigue within two to three days after the virus has first entered the body. However, rhinovirus does not cause any of these symptoms. They are caused by the constant release of cytokines from the human's innate and adaptive immune response. With the innate immune response, macrophages release cytokines which inflame the respiratory tract, dilate blood vessels, and stimulate nerve fibers, which causes sneezing, coughing, and pain. These cytokines also call in more immune cells, specifically B cells and T cells. The B cells attack the virus directly, and T cells kill infected host cells. The death and removal of cells that line the throat and nasal passages result in most of the observed symptoms of rhinovirus. However, rhinovirus's weakening of the immune system can cause secondary pathogens to enter and ravage the body. This mostly includes pneumonia and other bacteria which can cause upper respiratory tract infection, ear infection, sinus infection, or bronchiolitis. Severe cases in infants have led to asthma. Although rhinovirus is not deadly, the secondary pathogen effect has created an 8% mortality rate associated with rhinovirus. So how do we fight rhinovirus? Well, as there are over 100 strains of rhinovirus, it is impossible to create a vaccine. In addition, the body is unlikely to create memory cells for these 100 strains, so personal immunity is unlikely unless you have been sick with rhinovirus 100 times. Still, there are medications that can combat the symptoms of the common cold, such as anti-inflammatories and antihistamines. Precautionary measures for rhinovirus include washing hands, avoid touching the face, and staying away from someone who is sick because they are contagious for up to 10 days. However, being underdressed in cold weather or rainy conditions do not increase the likelihood of getting a cold. Overall, with 100 strains and being all over the globe all year round, rhinovirus cannot be eradicated or easily avoided. Luckily, it is essentially non-deadly, so with rest and proper care, one should be healthy within the week.